This is the slowest laptop ever. I bought it for $600 over a year ago, and not only was this the worst laptop I've ever bought, but it was also the worst financial decision I've ever made. Seriously, I've never wasted my money this badly before. So today, I'm not only going to prove to you that this is the worst laptop that you can buy, but I'm also going to show you that you can turn the slowest laptop into a decent gaming PC with zero dollars. I bought this laptop for school only to discover that it doesn't even meet the minimum requirements for any of my classes. So turning this trash laptop into a gaming PC with zero dollars ended up being a super hard challenge. Now you might think it's impossible for a $600 laptop to be bad because $600 is still a lot of money and you would be right to think that. But for someone like me who needs it for school, 3D rendering and most importantly gaming, this was the worst choice I could have ever made. So this begs the obvious question, how is this the slowest laptop you can get when you already have a terrible $50 PC? Well right now you can buy an RTX 3050 laptop for the same price. And in my case, I replaced this laptop with an RTX 3060 just six months after owning this thing. I know, I was stupid and uneducated when I bought this aluminum plate, and instead of looking at gaming benchmarks, I literally asked Google if integrated graphics were good for gaming, and clearly they freaking lied because this is not the gaming experience I was looking for. Fortunately, this laptop is still faster than my Nvidia GT710, so I still have some faith that this laptop will actually be able to run every game. I'm gonna regret saying that, I just know it. And just before we can start optimizing, we need to see how it performs in video games without any optimizations. However, this is not the first time I've optimized this computer, so I have to do a full factory reset to remove all my previous tweaks so that we can test games as if this was a completely fresh computer. And hopefully I don't lose anything I might need in the future. I lost my f resume. Well now I can't apply for jobs anymore until I write a new one. So we better complete this challenge or I did all this for nothing. Fortnite was getting over 120 FPS, which sounds great on paper because 120 FPS on a laptop with no graphics card sounds pretty good. But that's because we're looking straight into the sky with literally nothing rendering in. And that 120 FPS turns into the worst 60 FPS you've ever seen the second we start moving, which makes the game unplayable, especially since this game has the highest actions per minute out of any competitive game. And for this laptop to count as a gaming PC, it should not be ruining my gameplay. So not only will we be optimizing this laptop until we get 200 FPS, but we're also going to be optimizing it until we get rid of these damn st stutters. But getting 200 FPS and fixing stutters in Fortnite is only one half of the challenge as it's mainly a cpu dependent game so we're also going to be optimizing this pc until we get 60 fps in one of 2018's most gpu dependent games to make this laptop perform like an actual balanced gaming pc i set my graphics setting to the lowest preset and turned down even more settings and enabled performance upscaling which means that the images are being rendered in 360p then i upscaled to 720p using ai and even with the lowest settings and cheating with ai this potato still gets us an atrocious result of 39 fps dude the hill doesn't even render in because these integrated graphics suck. So hopefully we can optimize this laptop to get at least 60 FPS with these settings. And I know you won't believe me, but gaining 20 FPS ended up being a way harder challenge than doubling our FPS in Fortnite. But wait a second, why would I optimize this laptop when I have the RTX 3060? Isn't this challenge basically pointless? Well, there are actually two good reasons. Firstly, this laptop has an i5-1135G7 which is actually a great CPU that boosts up to 4.2 GHz. So I was pretty sure that this challenge would go a bit smoother than the $50 PC. Yeah, that thing struggled to close games, so imagine how difficult it was to run games. So I really just wanted a sturdy laptop to bring with me in case I ever feel like gaming. But there's one huge problem with this laptop. It doesn't have a GPU. And for gaming, that is a huge deal breaker. With only integrated graphics, this laptop doesn't even meet the minimum requirements for the newest video games. So to turn it into a proper gaming PC, we have to do more than just some simple optimizations, because gaming PCs in 2024 can do seriously amazing things. The first step to turning this laptop into a gaming PC was to connect it to a monitor. It doesn't boost our FPS at all in this case because we're using integrated graphics, but now that we're connected to a much larger screen, it feels more like an actual gaming PC than a regular laptop, and now we can see up to 1440p 240Hz. But unfortunately with this laptop, we are limited to 1440p 60Hz or 1080p 120Hz. And because we're playing on 720p anyways, we're just going to stick to 1080p 120Hz to take advantage of the FPS we're getting. To actually boost my FPS, I started by using CTT to debloat my computer. I picked all the recommended settings and I was done with that app in about 5 minutes. After debloating, the obvious next step is to apply optimization, so I then downloaded Vitrol and signed in as a guest because using my premium account would be cheating, obviously. 
so I took advantage of all the free features, and that also took me about 5 minutes to do. And just before I went back to check how much FPS we gained by doing these optimizations, I followed all of this up using a small selection of tweaks from Corvitech's full optimization guide. Because in the last video, I used my own optimization guide, and I felt like switching things up this time. And here are the results we got so far. We went from a stuttery 140 FPS to peaking at 233 FPS, and not only that, but the game was actually somewhat playable while building. Reaching our goal in Fortnite was an absolute breeze, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider was like running into a brick wall. Not only did we not get the results we wanted, but Shadow of the Tomb Raider stayed exactly the same at 39 FPS. These were not the results I wanted, so I decided to try some risky tactics to boost my FPS. A CPU overclock. Now most modern CPUs are already factory overclocked to the highest safe speeds, but I think we can- No you f stupid dumbass, it's not possible because this CPU is locked. Damn, you don't gotta be so rude. But what I did learn from my research is that you can also undervolt your laptop for more FPS over a longer period of time, and honestly, with this laptop only having one fan and one exhaust, I think we might be able to squeeze a bit more performance using a CPU undervolt. And then I find out that you can't undervolt this specific generation of CPUs. Dude, this laptop is actually unsavable. Until I randomly came across this video. Apparently you can raise the TDP on this thing from 15 to 20 watts, and that sounds like exactly what I need. Now we just need to pray that my laptop BIOS allows us to do the same thing, but with the luck we've been having so far, I expected nothing but another huge failure, and of course we don't have the same options as his laptop because I bought the worst possible laptop for $600. What the skibbity? So at this point, I just decided why not apply every single optimization completely mindlessly and see what happens, because what could possibly go wrong? So even though Fortnite is becoming more and more playable, Shadow of the Tomb Raider just refuses to gain even one more FPS. We managed to get below 40 FPS every single time even after applying every single optimization that I know. With basically no options left, I decided to at least try lossless scaling. And I know what you're thinking. $5. That's not $0, you freaking lying scumbag, you cheeseball. But just remember that most AAA games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider sell for over 50 bucks. So $5 is basically nothing if it meant that we were going to be able to complete this challenge. However, just like my earlier attempt at cheating around this challenge, it was not going to be that easy because last time we tried frame generation with lossless scaling to boost our FPS, it actually overloaded my GPU and caused my computer to lose FPS. So I'm really hoping that it actually works this time. And sadly, it worked. I limited my FPS to 20 and triple frame generated our way up to 60 FPS in 720p. So this got me thinking, if 720p is this easy, why not try 1080p? Well, 1080p and integrated graphics normally don't get put into the same sentence. But today, all that is going to change because we're going to use every single tactic in the book. So I enabled FSR upscaling in lossless scaling on top of the XESS upscaling we have built into Shadow of the Tomb Raider and then three times frame generation on top of that, and the main menu animations warp like crazy because there's so much movement. But hey, despite the warpiness, 48 FPS at 1080p is not too bad at all, and I'm really happy with what we managed to do with just 5 bucks. And if you want to see me optimize an even worse $50 computer until every game is playable, watch this video next.